Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Garb, and today here on this exciting video video, we are going to be going over the Gren Maju deck profile that I took to my locals yesterday. This deck was inspired um, from Solemn Judgment coming back to 3, and I figured we might as well try out this deck and see how well it does. I got second place only losing to Mech Knight Invoked because I didn't draw the Grand Maju. If I drew the Grand Maju, I would have OTK'd him. Um, but it is what it is with this deck. There's all the draw power that we can possibly ever want in this deck, and it just comes down to really, do you draw the Grand Maju or not? But without further ado, here is the deck profile. So we have triple of our Grand Maju dies. Um, basically, if you don't know what Grand Maju does is well, you should obviously go look at my other deck profiles, but he gains 400 attack for every card that you have banished. So what makes this deck super, super good post the Rising Rampage is the Gizmech Orochi, the Metal, the whatever his full name is, the Serpentine Sky Slasher. This guy quick effect you can special summon them from your hand or graveyard by banishing the top eight cards of your deck and then once per turn during your turn you can banish three cards from your extra deck to destroy one face-up card on the field helps fill your banish zone to get grand maju super super big i think the biggest grand maju i had yesterday was like twelve thousand four hundred attack points attacking right over for game this card's amazing if you see this card and grand maju then you're pretty much winning the game or if you see desires in this card you're definitely OTKing your opponent that turn and the last three monsters of the deck that we are playing to help us draw into our snake and our grand maju is triple fantastical dragon phantasme this deck went from being kind of budget with our trickstar grand maju deck to being nowhere near budget after this deck um you're going to have to play some expensive cards to help draw into your trap cards, draw into your desires, draw into your Grand Maju, and Phantasme helps you do that. It's not great against every single deck in the format, but the decks that it's good against are really good. Helps you draw the Grand Maju, and then you can side it out if it's not good against that, your, that particular matchup. And that's it for the monsters. We're just playing the nine monsters because really your Snake and your Grand Maju are the only monsters you need. Um, moving on to our spell cards, we're playing Triple Pot of Desires. A 4,000 attack boost to the Grand Maju is always, always a good thing. Um, if any of you guys got ulti desires, hit me up because I may be looking for some ulti desires on to help max out the rarity of this deck. Drawing two cards, always super good, 4,000 attack. And then we're also playing Triple Pot of Extravagance. Like I said, this deck is no longer budget. Um, adding six more cards banished from your extra deck. We're no longer playing Eater Millions because there's just too much, your extra deck goes away too fast to play Eater. Um, I'm still play testing Eater, but I don't think it's great if you're playing Extravagance. And there's never really a time. You always want to activate Extravagance like your first turn, maybe your second turn, and then Desires once you have the Grand Maju. Um, but Extravagance helps you draw into that Grand Maju. And then to help with the Solemns later, playing Triple Soul Absorption, 5,000 life points from every single Desires you activate. And then 4,000 life points when you activate a Orochi, um, and then you have 3,000 life points every time you activate an Extravagance. It's super, super good, and then gives you Solemns. There was one duel, I activated double Solemn Judgment, and I still had 11,000 11, life points on the board, which is really, really good, and that was just from one Soul Absorption. Next, we are playing Triple Super Poly. Your entire extra deck doesn't matter, so it's almost all going to be super poly targets you're not really going to be linking away a bunch of stuff unless you play use some of the other cards in the deck um so most of the deck is super poly targets and super poly is just super broken and breaking combo decks this format then we have triple call by the grave this is more used as a disruption piece than it is to actually do hand traps a lot of times you don't really care if your extravagance or your uh desires get ashed um if you have it in your hand obviously the draw two is super nice to get you your grand maju but it's not super needed so 
playing Triple Call by the Grave, and I'll spell card, one reasoning. I'm probably going to take this out. Um, this was my 41st card. It was okay. One of my opponents, everybody thinks that Grand Maju is a level 4 for some reason. So one of my opponents called level 4, and I was like, okay, because I only play level 8s and level 4, uh, level 8s and level 3. So I was like, okay, cool. And so I got a Grand Maju on the field attack for game, which was really good. Um, I might keep it in. It was kind of a side out for, for other games, but... Now, moving on to the trap cards for our floodgates, there can be only one. Um, we only have three monsters in the deck, really. We have Phantasme, we have Metal Snake, and we have Grand Maju. They're all different types, so there can be only one. Is super, super powerful, especially against Guard Dragon decks. And then we're also playing Triple Summon Limit to floodgate out our opponent to summons. We only summon at most twice per turn, which is so helps us out with floodgating our opponent and then we're also playing triple crackdown because crackdown is just super good in this format taking your opponent's monsters so they can't play the game is really really good and what makes crackdown really good because you're taking your opponent's monsters is the seven solemns that we can play so we're playing triple solemn strike triple solemn judgment and then the one solemn warning. That's right. Ulti strikes goes for judgments and ulti warning. Um, these are really good because if you have multiples of these face down on the field, the crackdown's just going to steal the only monster they have left, and it's just it's just super super good. And it's going to be even better once we have the side deck cards that are coming out of the megatons which like the rock, the spell card, and then the dimensional shifter will make crackdown that much better. So also triple judgment, really, really good. There was one interaction that I had against combo Cody where he, um, he played something I strike or no, he activated hot red to negate, um, one of my, I think it was my desires. And then I striked his hot red. He red rebooted my strike. I judgmented his red reboot. And then he has second re red reboot in his hand, stopping my judgment. Which, okay, it that was that was pretty funny. But now moving on to the extra deck for our cherries targets, we're playing two starving venom fusion dragons, two violet chimeras, two world chalice guard dragon armadukes, uh, one muddy mud dragon or one mud dragon of the swamp. Um, this is going to be bumped up to two once I find a second one. Uh, one Borload Furious Dragon, which will also be bumped up to two when I find a second one. Um, I expected somebody to play Destiny Heroes in my de at my locals, so I played one Dystopia and one Dangerous. And then that's all for the Super Poly targets. I need to find some better Super Poly targets than, the, than a couple of these, but that is what I played for this event. And then we played one Nightmare Cerberus, one Phoenix, or one Cerberus, one Unicorn. Didn't summon either of those. One Topologic Zaborius. Now, uh, this card is what I was super excited for for Grand Maju. Um, if you crack down enough of your opponent's monsters, you can summon this. And basically, what it does is when a monster is special summoned to a zone that it points to, it banishes every card on the field. And then during your next standby phase, it comes back, which is really, really good. And then we played just two random monsters because I didn't have time to finish my extra deck. But one Ulti Kigari, one Ulti Hayate to finish out the extra deck. Now, going on to the side deck, this is definitely going to change after the Megatons because I'm going to play triple of each of the promos in uh, my side deck because that's really, really good for the control aspect of this deck. We played triple Ghost Ogre, triple Lancia, triple Twin Twister. And then I expected some Pendulum players at my locals, so we played Triple D Fisher, or sorry, D Barrier, and then Triple Red Reboot to end off the deck. That's going to be it for this deck profile. I hope you guys did enjoy. Um, this deck worked really, really well. I took down Combo Cody's uh, Buster, Bl Buster Blade of Guard Dragon that's been sweeping our locals. And then I also took down Lair of Darkness, which was a really, really funny game. But yeah, that's going to be it, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you guys are new. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.